Hey friends, in this video we'll look at eight super underrated and super useful Figma plugins that you've probably never heard about because, well, designers don't really talk about them. All right, folks, so we're in Figma and what you see on the screen right now, this is the end result of what we can do with these plugins. Of course, this isn't everything you can do with the plugins, but this is what I'll be doing with the plugins today. Let's go to the first one, which is Coolers. Let's launch the plugin, Coolers. So this plugin will let you create color palettes. You have three tabs, you have Generate, you have Library, and you have Explore. Library is gonna require you to create an account at Coolers, but that's not a problem, it's free. So you should do that. Then you can save palettes and stuff like that. The Explore tab lets you find palettes. It's, uh, it's a way to kind of browse through the trending palettes, the latest, popular, based on different styles and stuff like that. So maybe we want a dark style and then you can just click that and then you're gonna get dark style palettes. Today we're gonna focus on the Generate tab. So let's click in here. What's cool here is that we, first of all, we can click generate to generate different colors. Now, if we find something here that we like, we can hit this little lock icon and lock that color. So now that we generate, we're gonna lock that color, but still generate colors that matches this one. So we can do that for the colors we like. We just keep on generating like this until we find something that we feel is what we wanna go for. So maybe this is it. Now that it's locked in, I can hit the context menu in the bottom right and click here on the add colors to document. Now we don't see where it ended up, but we can see that it, it's here in our side menu. So I can double click here and it ended up here somehow. Let's go back up to coolers. And here we have it, our color palette. Nice. All right, so let's take that with us when we go to color shades. This is the second plugin. Let's launch it, Color Shades. So what this plugin lets you do is we can take one color and then generate a bunch of different shades and a bunch of different tints based on that particular color. So let's say this pink here is gonna be our main color. I'll take that hex code, copy it, paste it over here, and then just create. And here we go, we have a bunch of different shades based on our primary color here. So this is super neat. The next one is type scales. We'll launch the plugin type scales. If you want to dodge the super boring work of starting each project with creating this like hierarchy of text styles, this plugin is super nice because it will generate the base for you and then you can take the base and kind of edit it as you want and as you go with your project. But it's very simple as well. So let's say we have a base size of 16. That's the size of the text we'll be using the most, like the body text in our project. So base size 16, then I can set the scale. So how much do we want it to scale for each of these steps? maybe 1.4, maybe 1.5, maybe 1.3. What's the line height? So maybe 1.3 there as well. How many scales up, how many scales down? So from 16, how many steps down and up? Six and two sounds good. And then we can choose if we wanna round the values or if we wanna have them, you see here, they kinda of look a bit wonky if we don't round them. So let's round them. What's cool here is that we get the rim values as well, which is nice when you're working with devs and they want to make the designs look as in Figma, then if you give them the rim value, the sizing will stay consistent across all devices and everything. So it will look the way you want it to look. So let's generate here and we get this amazing frame that just has it all kind of done for us already. Then we can go in here and kind of say, okay, I want this to be bold or extra bold and this one to be bold. And then we can add these as styles to our project. But this is a quick way to get just the groundwork without doing anything. So that's awesome. Now let's put it here and jump down to vector logos. For this plugin, I'll 
actually create a little scenario here. So let's create a frame. This is just a frame. And inside of that frame, we'll have a little container. Let's give it a color so that we can see it. I'll give it some rounding. I'll make it into an auto layout. I'll add maybe a text. So here, uh, title, resize it a bit, add some padding. And by the way, if you want to learn more about auto layouts and stuff, I have a video on that somewhere. Back to the plugin here, we have vector logos. This plugin is awesome because you're going to you're going to be surprised how many logos are covered in this plugin. So I'm just going to go with a big company for now. Let's do Spotify. But then you get a bunch of different Spotify logos. So there I have that logo. Let's resize it and just add it here. I'll add an auto layout. So we have a title and we have a logo. So that's vector logos. Just a quickie. Do you have any Figma plugins that you use a lot, but that you think most people don't know about? Leave them in the comment section below because I, for one, would be super excited to hear about more plugins and I'm sure other viewers would be as well. Okay, let's jump to the fifth plugin, which is Rider for Figma. This is a cool one. Let's take that frame. Let's borrow this frame as well with our type scales. And let's take a text size here. Let's take 27 pixels. I'll add that. I'll just write some gibberish here and we'll see what Rider for Figma can do. Writing some stuff that doesn't make sense. Okay, let's see what Rider for Figma or Figma can help us do with this. So I have the text targeted. I launched the plugin. So first of all, writing some stuff, thank you. Doesn't makes, well, it's gonna be doesn't make, but let's see, sense. And it got it all right for us. And then we can see like here, a score 100. We have no spelling or grammar errors, like terms, style, clarity, delivery, inclusivity, everything is cool. So that's a really nice plugin for copywriting. Okay, so let's move on to Beautiful Shadows, which is the sixth plugin. Here, I target this frame. I launch Beautiful Shadows. You can see that we get this super nice and clean interface that we can use. And you just take this little circle here, which is the light source, and you can see what happens to the box in real time. It's really cool. This is a good way to create these cool like mock-up effects that Apple and other product companies use. So I just find something that I like, I apply, and that's it. We have the beautiful shadows added to our little nice box here. Shift this background color a bit. So it's almost new morphism going on here. Okay, so we have that one. Now let's bring it down to layer styles. And here, this is one of my favorite plugins. So let's launch layer styles, layer styles. And what this plugin does is that you're probably familiar with the fact that you can, you can add color styles, you can add text styles, but we don't really have a way to add combined styles for like stroke widths and rounded corners and box shadows and Figma. Well, with layer styles, you can do that. So if we take this box here, we just click the plus with layer styles plugin on. You can see that we get frame 10 here and we can rename this to maybe 32 pixel border radius plus big shadow. Now, if we extend this a bit and we create a new box here, we just click this it applies this style to it. All the roundings, the shadows, and the background color. Okay, over to the last one. And for this last one, I'm gonna take our shades that we have up here. Take this one, I'll add it here, and I'll add a little background color to this. And let's add some stuff in here. Let's do that. Once again, doing some auto layout magic. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to show you how this last plugin is very, very powerful. So now you can see here, we have this 
very nice looking card but it's a light mode and maybe we'll want to have it in dark mode as well so usually we would have to do all of that manually well we might not have to do that any longer because if we take this frame and we just launch dark mode magic we don't have to do that anymore and if you don't want to have the frame the whole frame here be dark mode maybe you just want the content inside of it so maybe just the auto layout then we target that and we click enter on dark mode magic dark mode magic ladies and gentlemen it's very easy and a super neat plugin there we have it eight figma plugins that will definitely boost your productivity and up your design game now if you found this valuable or useful, what really helps with YouTube is clicking or hitting or smashing or whatever you call it these days, the subscribe button, the like button, the bell notification button, all of these things really helps an aspiring YouTuber like myself. So if you have time for it, I would really appreciate it. Now, until the next time, take care, peeps. Ciao.